the story, you know, relies a lot on um, Dorothy's uh, mental state and obviously the, the mystery behind Leanne's. So how much control you have over how to maintain this mystery? Because I think this type of story, mystery is the thing that, you know, captivates you and that's what gives you basically going to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the series and you, you work on both of them. So how much control you have over, you know, ma you know, maintaining that mystery in the editorial process or just the producer and the screenwriter in your ear just telling you, go do this, do that. Well, I think once we find the, um, the tone for the episode, uh, I'm working on one now where it's Leanne is like really paranoid. I can't tell the people what's going on, but something she's worried something's going to happen. So her emotional state is she's freaked out. Whereas Dorothy is just in another planet. You know, she's kind of operating as if everything's fine, even though, you know, she knows it's not. So there's something in her performance that most of the directors get. If they don't, we'll find it. And it's like Leanne is a certain character. And then there's, there's Sean too, who Knight sometimes shoots in close up so you can really see what's going on behind him because he's carrying a lot of weight about, you know, what's going on. How can I keep Dorothy together? And, you know, I feel bad for Leanne. But so basically, it's like going through all the takes and every little bit. And if they shoot a lot, I can always find little nuances. Maybe we're not meant for that scene, but I can put him in there to keep the um, performances constant. And I think that's what makes the show so good that directors shoot enough. Even though a lot of them just shoot oneers, um, it's done in a way with performance coming first. And that's what draws the audience in to Dorothy and to Leanne and what state of mind they're in in each episode. And it's funny because every single episode, they're in different states of mind even though to the viewer, when they watch them, they might not notice that, but when you play them all back, you can say, oh yeah, this is really, she's really anxious here. She's really uh, kind of freaked out. Like in the first season, Dorothy was like, not even, you know, kind of like functioning. Um, so that is a, a very good question. And I, I pay a lot of attention to that, especially with Knight and Ashana, because they're really very performance oriented and, um, it's fun. Thank you. Okay. I'm a huge fan of, of, of horror suspense, you know, thrillers and psychological movies. And I think uh, Terpen, you know, plays well all the different genders. And one thing that is a constant on all of them is the music. And, and the music obviously complements the scene and the whole story. So in your in my question for you is how, how do you go about writing, you know, or composing each, uh, which is your composition for each scene and how did you know that it that you know that this this piece is going to work for this scene and this piece is going to work for, for the other one is is just something that you, you know was some, just an organic or do you have some input that they gave you from the production side um you know we well early before starting season two we did kind of a reset um work at night on uh um, certainly I had created a whole world of what season one sounded like and all the instruments it would be. And then we were like, all right, well, that's season one. So let's start fresh with new sounds within reason. I mean, it needed to be servant ish, but like, so there's like a lot more electronics at all. So I wrote a few pieces and that was sort of like, okay, we're in a more, a bigger and more aggressive, sometimes orchestral kind of thing. So that's kind of like what we're doing. And from that, it kind of gave us a, a resource of kind of like where our headspace was. Um, and so that being like Knight and I, when we would talk about the score. So we would sit down, go through an episode, you know, with Harvey or another editor, and we would go through and we'd just go um, and spot the film, which is going through each episode and saying like, well, okay, do you think there should be music here? Okay, let's keep going. Should there be music here? Let's keep going. And, you know, and then you talk about the scene, like what kind of music, you know? Mm -hmm. Not like literally what kind of music, but like what's happening or what the characters are thinking or what's, you know, like, oh, this is a very intense scene. You know, this is, this means this later on, or this is going to be important this later on. So, you know, the discussions uh, with Knight are, very um, character-driven, story-driven, 
no, he's never like, make sure you had a violin, or, you know, <laughs> nothing like that. He'll, it's very, uh, you know, by, by now we've already established like the, the, the dialect for the show um, with the pre, pre-scoring music that I've written. Mm-hmm. And it, it's now just about like, okay, applying that. Um, and it's not as simple as just sort of like, okay, take this section and just hit it there. But um, it's certainly like, we know kind of where the, our starting position is. And, um, and then spotting it is about discussing in kind of like uh, dramatic nuances about what characters are thinking, where they're coming from, whose point of view are we at, which is a huge element mm-hmm. um, that can inform many different things because you could score someone else's in the room that you're not even looking at or barely looking at and then it changes the entire experience. Um, uh, anyway, so the point is that, you know, decisions are made based on um, that spotting process, which is called, and that's how you, you figure out how you're going to score it in the kind of music that you use mm-hmm. or compose.